Thank you all for being here. My name is Simran Makhija. And today I'm going to talk about innovations in agricultural extension and the need for greater monitoring and evaluation of these innovations so that we can better adapt to changing climate realities. When we talk about extension, we're talking not only about the sharing of information, but also the transmission of knowledge, both to and from farmers, in a complex and iterative manner that draws on everything from face-to-face -face engagements, to learning by doing, to ICT-based interactions, to in-depth back-end analytics of massive data streams. One way to think about innovations in extension is to consider three levels of innovation. First, innovation in agricultural technologies and practices themselves. Second, innovations in the modalities for sharing information about these technologies and practices. And third, innovations in the strategies, structures, and management of organizations that engage farmers and share information. The first one is largely a question of agronomy and constant innovation to ensure that practices that are being promoted are relevant to local agroecological and socioeconomic conditions, and importantly, cognizant of changing climate realities. The second and third ones are the focus of a lot of our work here at IFPRI. As Elizabeth mentioned, we're working on multiple studies in different countries and contexts to try to understand how to best promote new agricultural technologies and disseminate information about innovative agricultural practices. We're also studying how extension organizations, systems, and staff can be better organized or incentivized to service smallholders, farmers who are the most vulnerable when it comes to climate change. For now, I want to focus on the point at which extension agents and organizations interface with farmers themselves, the last mile of delivery. In many ways, this is where we can learn the most about adapting to new climate realities, doing more, better, and new. The innovation occurring at the interface between extension and farmers is rapidly expanding. There are many extension service providers out there who are experimenting with new modalities for delivering information. Not just farmer field schools and other experiential learning approaches, but also SMS reminders, video screenings, interactive voice response systems, community radio, and other ICT approaches. Many of these service providers invest considerably in monitoring their performance. They collect numbers on how many farmers were reached, at what frequency, and to what effect. Rapid and intensive information trans in transmission allows us to understand and address the problems facing smallholder farmers in a world of climate change. Faster, better, and cheaper. But are we doing enough? Given the volume of monitoring data being collected, it begs the question, are we using these data to run actionable analytics? Are we really closing the feedback loop and incorporating farmer opinions? Are we using monitoring data to their full potential? I would argue that we still have a long way to go. With investment in better extension modalities, are we truly collecting good quality, gender disaggregated data and measuring the impact of these innovations? Are we willing to put these innovations to the test and learn whether they have had a measurable impact on yields, costs, incomes, or nutrition? Again, there is a lot more that we can do. I want to illustrate with an example of our work with Digital Green, a nonprofit that has pioneered the introduction of video-mediated extension in India and Ethiopia. Our role in this project has been to evaluate the effectiveness of this approach. We are using a randomized control trial to test hypotheses along this impact pathway. We measure the extent to which the video-mediated approach has led to increases in access to extension. We also study the extent to which this increase in access to extension has led to knowledge gains, increases in extension agent effort, and uptake of technologies. We further explore sustained adoption of technology, and if the video approach led to higher yields and incomes. We have found positive effects on some of these outcomes, but not on all. But adapting to new climate realities means that we must experiment, fail, learn, and experiment again. As we put more money into adaptation, we need to spend more time thinking not just about new innovations in the technologies themselves, but also new methods to monitor these innovations and evaluate their impact. Thank you.